Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher and welcome to All About Canadian Books. Today we're going to get to know Nancy Lamb, who is the author of The Loyal Daughter, which was published by At Bay Press. Welcome to All About Canadian Books, Nancy. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to have you and to get to know you better. Are you ready? Yes, as ready as I'll ever be, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Nancy, when you were a child and a teenager, who were your favorite Canadian authors? Oh, so many. Um, Gordon Corman, for sure. Judy Bloom. Oh. Uh, <laughs> um, and I guess as I got older, I liked Margaret Lawrence a lot uh and Alice Monroe's stories always confused me but I wanted more <laughs> <laughs> if that makes any sense and, and did all, you, oh, yeah sorry. of course Margaret Atwood too yes right yeah. just always very so in-depth and so much sort of perspective on each character and did you hear that um are you there god it's me Margaret is going to be made into a book a movie yeah a movie yeah yeah I just I read that that's amazing I know I'm so excited <clears throat> I loved her though there were so many so many from her absolutely now as a Canadian history major which of your classes had the most impact on you oh again uh so many but I guess it would have been first year Canadian history class with Professor Stevens. Yeah, he, um, Paul Stevens, <clears throat> he, um, I had to actually fight to get into his class. Because <laughs> I, uh, I, I don't know if the class was, it was full on the computer, but logically the class itself, there was space and the professor said, yeah, it was fine but they wouldn't let me register. And I thought, this is ridiculous, right? It's so logistically stupid. So, <laughs> so I went to the Dean's office because <clears throat> I had a scholarship and I said, you guys told me if I come here, you'd pay for my tuition. I could take what I want. I want this course. Let me in. <laughs> the professor's okay. Like, what's the issue here? Change your bloody computer system, right? You were already starting to be a lawyer back then, Nancy. <laughs> Apparently. Well, I just, it was so stupid, right? It was just such a silly thing. I thought, everybody who's important enough says it's okay. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and the people that, are, that it's going to impact say it's okay. Why is it not okay with your silly little computer system? And then I can't do it, right? <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> it's a great course. Uh, he taught us to, he invited us to look at things from various perspectives. We actually had a debate in class. I just, um, it was just a very, very, very good course that helped me see things in a different light. And he was so paternalistic almost, right, towards it. And so I just thought, okay. <laughs> I'm going to continue with this. Yeah. And Nancy, um, what made you decide to be an immigration lawyer? Mm, various things. <laughs> my my parents were immigrants, obviously, so that interested me. But I I liked I, as we were talking about earlier. I guess we. Lawyers get a lot of flack, right? <laughs> they don't get, contribute. It seems like they almost don't contribute positively to to issues sometimes. Like they, there's a lot of litigation. There's a lot of negativity surrounding the field. Um, they're seen as bloodsuckers and money makers, right? <laughs> but I wanted something that really contributed in a positive way back to the community. I mean, not that that was what I was looking for in particular, but I thought, oh, I can make a living doing this. And so, and I'm helping, like I'm helping people, right? So 
that's that's part of it. That was probably a large part of it. <laughs> yeah. Um, can you tell us something about you that would surprise us? I don't know. <laughs> what do you know, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm kidding. I don't know anything. <laughs> um. I don't know if this would be a surprise or not, but I guess I really, I really like being sort of um, active all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Whether it be with work or physically or something, right? I, I enjoy, enjoy being active. <laughs> I don't know if that counts. I don't know. <laughs> Ab absolutely it counts. <laughs> So when you're being active, what type of activity would you do? Oh, I've done everything over the years, it seems like. Um, I was in, uh, I actually was in karate for a few years. Oh, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Budokan karate, U of T. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, we only got up to a blue belt. Um, well, that, that's more than me. <laughs> uh, now, yoga and running, uh, boxing, cardio boxing. Yeah. Yeah. Just sort of whatever, whatever I can do to be active for the day. Right. And it just uh, everything and anything, basically. <laughs> nice. nice. And what about when are you most creative? Would you say what time of day? Oh, well, that's a tricky one. Um, I don't know. I guess it depends on, I, I guess, early morning. Yeah. yeah, I guess early morning. It's usually when, see, I don't, I don't think of it in times, like, in terms of time of day. It's sort yeah. of in terms of, I know all the writing sort of boosters and manuals say don't do it this way you can't just wait for inspiration to strike <laughs> you have to work at it every day but it, it really is sometimes if something happens I'll it's like oh I've got to record that yeah I do have that where I always have something to write with and I like writing like I like physically pen and paper I actually prefer pencil and paper and I like to write as opposed to typing it yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. 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 Are, are you, are you the same? I am the same. Yeah. And especially if I'm stuck, then I pull out. Yeah. And, and there's just something about the stream of consciousness through the head and the pen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I like the thick, thick pencils, like drafting pencils, right? It's like I get teased. It's like, what is that? A crayon? Like what are you doing? <laughs> but I love it. I used to write my essays out first like by longhand before I would do the go to editing and stuff and that's how I still do this harder with a book because that's a lot of paper right <laughs> yeah it's a lot of paper it is yeah. <laughs> um who is your hero alive or dead it can be either one mom yeah 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 <laughs> yeah for sure right hits the book <laughs> yeah yes yes which we'll talk about in the next segment yeah okay <laughs> love it yeah no yes yeah and what about what would be your proudest moment oh that's a tough one Probably something with the kids. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't know, I, I guess. Yeah. Not that I could really like, sort of like my body did it, not me, but <laughs> I didn't actually do anything, but yeah. Yeah. But probably the kids, right? Aw, yeah. Although they don't tell them that they've yet okay. to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't, yeah. yeah. Don't watch this video. <laughs> You haven't hit the bar yet. Keep going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Aww. Nancy, thank you so much for my, answering my questions. It's been really fun to get to know you a little better. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Oh, it's it's my pleasure. 
and viewers, do not go anywhere because we are going to chat about Nancy's novel, The Loyal Daughter, and find out the story behind it. Thank you so much for watching. And Nancy, thank you too. <laughs> Bye, everyone.